Hey, this is just Frank and Wrigley again. And I just put my coat on because it's got a little chilly in the studio. <laughs> and the dog was sleeping, but when he saw me put my coat on, he's a puppy. He That's a trigger for him. Right? If someone's putting their coat on, they're leaving. And he gets very upset. And for him, it's clear that he thinks it's like he's being abandoned. Right? And what I want to talk about is how FOMO, fear of missing out, at a much deeper level, is actually fear of abandonment in the customer. Very few people talk about it at this deep level. But I think it's worthwhile to understand for marketers, right? And I'll be clear, you could be pretty diabolical uh, if you choose to and really, you know, drive in that fear of, you know, being left behind. Or you could just understand it and say, hey, right, other people are doing this and you don't want to miss out, right? That is FOMO. And sometimes you don't even have to say it. If something becomes a fad or very popular, especially with media and celebrities, uh, people will do FOMO on themselves. But for marketers uh, who don't have that kind of reach, you do need to work on people and say, hey, other people in your niche are learning this, are using this technique. It could be, okay, I've got a dog here. It could be like a new pair of dog clippers, right? Or something for their nails or some kind of shampoo. Right? I mean, this is how marketing drives not just consumption, but sometimes improvement. The famous story about Albert Lasker, the Chicago advertising guy, the guy created toothpaste and literally created dental hygiene because he had, as Dan Kennedy would call it, goop to sell, which is, you know, the toothpaste in a tube. So I have always thought that that was a good example of FOMO being used to encourage an improvement in human behavior, health, what have you. You can use the fear of abandonment or fear of missing out to help people. It's not just, you know, to suck money out of them. I mean, you need the transactions and the sales to stay in business and to make a healthy profit so you can do more marketing. But um, this is all about understanding that there are emotions in your customer that are not always rational and are sometimes quite primitive, like in a puppy who flips out when I put my jacket on. Right? I mean, he is automatically prancing and you know, jumping up on me um, to not be left behind. And that's FOMO, which is really fear of abandonment. And it's not rational. But if we really deeply understand what's going on in the customer, we can use it to encourage positive behavior which yes, is buying our stuff. But if our stuff is truly helpful, right? If it's gonna advance their health, their happiness, their knowledge, their earning capacity, then I say, yeah, you have to use it. You have to, you know, pressure them a little bit. Say, come on, dude, do that, man, woman, you know, adult, child, you gotta do this because everyone else is doing it. And everyone else is happy and satisfied and healthy and rich, right? I mean, that's FOMO. And again, uh, FOMO or fear of abandonment is just one of 70 emotional triggers that we teach in our program at the website. The link is under the video. And again, as I've said in other videos, smart marketers understand this. The genius marketers, they probably, in many cases, can't even articulate it. They just write genius copy. And we say, oh, they're a genius. But if you take it apart, reverse engineer it, 
diagram it, dissect it, etc. What you really see is that they're stacking emotional triggers in their product, in their advertising, in their messaging, right? So all I've done is take something that is many times very primitive and break it down into a simple, easy to understand and easy to implement course. It's six and a half hours long, it's streaming audio, easy to understand, easy to use on a website, and quite frankly, the smart marketers are using it. And if you're not thinking customer emotions first, you're not um, at the leading edge, okay? And yes, I am deliberately demonstrating FOMO in this video to show you how easy it is to use and how it's not malicious, right? I'm just stating a fact. It is true that emotional triggers are what people buy, that the smartest, most sophisticated marketers use it like second nature. And if you're not aware of it, uh, I've never seen a course like this. That's how I came up with it. I was like noodling around. I was like, what is what really makes people buy stuff? And once I came up with the framework um, for emotional triggers, it flowed like water because it's the truth. And I think if you're in business for yourself or if you have an idea that you want to market, you would be well served to check out the course. Um, I had a lot of fun putting it together and I'm having fun on these videos. And, you know, something like a dog getting upset can demonstrate to me, and I hope to you, that emotional triggers really drive our behavior. And the behavior we care about our purchase decisions, right? Which is the business we're in. So, um, Wrigley is calm again. I hope you're calm and make the decision to check out the program at the website because it will deepen your understanding of how your customer actually thinks or at least behaves. Because a lot of times emotions aren't rational, but we need to understand it because we want them to buy our stuff, which helps them lose weight you know, get a companion, get a better job, get out of debt, etc. All the things that we teach, um, many times the problems themselves are rooted in emotional triggers. So if we can help shift them to uh, more constructive, or, you know, positive behavior, you know, we're really providing a service, but we need to understand how the customer operates at a very deep level. All right, and look how relaxed the dog is. He's out of frame. Anyway, uh, click on the link under the video. Get the program. It's called Manipulation, Emotional Triggers That Make People Buy. All right, Wrigley? Okay, that's it.